In this video, you're going to learn how to use a derma roller to stimulate new hair growth. Derma rollers have seen some amazing results, but you need to know how to use this technique properly or you risk damaging your hair further. Hey guys, Leon here and welcome to the Hair Guard YouTube channel. On this channel, we create science-backed YouTube videos all about how you can regrow healthy hair. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. Now this video is going to be split into two halves. The first half is a presentation, reviewing the science and explaining just how the derma roller works. And then in the second half, I'll show you exactly how to use it for optimal results when it comes to hair loss. Then we're going to finish with some FAQs. So guys, if you don't already have your own derma roller, just simply click the link in the description and we're going to send you one of these free of charge. Now this video is the accumulation of three years of experience with a derma roller. Will, the founder of HairGuard has seen some excellent results and along with the other necessary things for a successful hair care routine, the derma roller has played a pivotal role in his transformation. So guys, this video is going to be pretty in depth. So what I've done is I've put some timestamps for you as well in the description so you can follow along wherever you want to. Again, don't forget to claim your free derma roller by clicking the link in the description and let's get into the video. So guys, what we're going to review in the first half of this video is we're going to look at what the derma roller is. We're going to look at how the derma roller helps with thinning hair. We're going to look at the science behind its use, including study reviews. We're going to look at how micro needles can stimulate skin cell proliferation. Then we'll look at how micro, micro needles can activate the WNT beta catenin pathway. Then we're going to look at how it can treat thinning caused by androgenetic alopecia. Then we're going to look at the clinic versus at home micro needling. How does the derma roller help with the thinning of hair? In a similar way that the derma roller is used to stimulate collagen production on the facial skin, it can be used to increase cell production and increase blood circulation around the scalp, which in turn will help with new hair growth. So let's have a look at the science behind the use of a derma roller. Microneedling has been studied for decades, and as such, there are studies which back its claims. Some of these even prove that the derma roller and other similar tools, such as the derma stamp and derma pen, can be beneficial for your scalp. Don't believe me? Then let's take a look. First, microneedles can stimulate skin cell proliferation. In 2012, American researchers explored the role that microneedling had on skin cell proliferation. This is beneficial in the treatment of wounds, scars, hyperpigmentation, and even in growing hair. In short, researchers determined that the procedure induces a three-step healing process. These steps are inflammation, proliferation, and remodeling. These mimic the natural healing processes that the wounds undergo. Typically, the remodeling phase can lead to scarring. So why doesn't microneedling cause the same? Well, according to a 2007 research study, scarring only occurs when the initial wound reaches a certain depth. When using a designated tool, the needles do not penetrate this depth. They do, however, go just deep enough to initiate the healing process, above which then triggers skin cell proliferation. Well, are you still not convinced? Let's look more closely at a 2014 study performed on patients with alopecia areata. This small trial consisted of two patients, one male and one female, and presenting with patchy hair loss on the frontal and vertex of the scalp. The male had experienced this loss of hair for one year, while the female had experienced it for six months. The patients were treated with a 10 milligrams per milliliter concentration of this various compound per microneedling session. It was first applied before the session and then the second was applied after. The sessions were performed using a derma roller and they occurred three times at three week intervals. At the end of the study, the results were significant in both patients. So we can see here in figure one, this is the clinical picture of the male patient showing multiple uh, alopecia patches all over the scalp. And then in figure three, you can see some absolutely excellent hair growth after just three sessions. And then we can see here in figure two, uh, the clinical picture of the female patient showing multiple smooth surfaced alopecia patches all over the scalp and then again uh, you can see in picture A that's after one session then picture B is after the second session so they're obviously showing some huge signs of improvement. Now while this particular study was small and focused on patients with alopecia areata it can help us to better understand microneedling's role in hair growth. Even better there are studies which show microneedling's effectiveness in the treatment of 
androgenetic alopecia. So microneedles can also activate the WNT beta 10 catenin pathway. Now in recent years, scientists have linked the regulation of adult stem cells with hair follicle proliferation and maintenance. This is a process that's largely regulated by the WNT beta catenin pathway. This theory was put to test in a 2016 study when researchers from South Korea studied the effects of repeated microneedle stimulation on mice. The mice were split into groups of two and various needle lengths were tested, including 0.15, 0.25, uh, 0 0.5 and 1 mm. There were also two different cycle periods, so we had 10 cycles or 13 cycles. Now the hair was shaved from the back of all mice in the study and magnified photographs were taken at 7 days and 14 days after the first microneedling session. Regular photographs were also taken at 13 days and 17 days after the first session. The researchers hypothesized that the growth was a result of the upregulation of various proteins, including WNT3A, VEGF and WNT10B. This was proven when samples were taken from the mice. And which groups had the best results? Well, the WNT3A beta catenin, WNT10B, and VEGF mRNA expressions uh, were all increased in the 5 mm 10 cycles group when compared with control. Microneedles can treat thinning caused by androgenetic alopecia. Now, androgenetic alopecia is the most common type of alopecia in men, though it also affects women. The most common recommended treatments include minoxidil and finasteride but the desire for natural treatment options is growing. Fortunately, there have been studies which show microneedling's effects on patients with androgenetic alopecia. The first study was performed in 2013 and it consisted of 100 patients with mild to moderate androgenetic alopecia. The participants were split into two groups. The first group received weekly microneedling treatment with twice daily application of minoxidil, while the second group was given only minoxidil. Now, photographs were taken at baseline and then all scalps were shaved to ensure equal length of hair shaft. There were three parameters which researchers used to tra track eff efficacy. The first is change from baseline hair count at 12 weeks. The second is patient assessment of hair growth at 12 weeks, and then an investigator assessment of hair growth at 12 weeks. And the results of the 12 week study can be seen on the right. Now the mean hair count of patients in both groups improved. However, the improvement was more significant in the minoxidil plus dermarolling group. The investigator and patient self-assessment also showed a marked difference over the minoxidil only group. And while the above study is promising, this isn't the only study that was performed on patients with androgenetic alopecia. In 2015, researchers from Mumbai studied the effects of microneedling on men with androgenetic alopecia who didn't respond to conventional treatments, such as Rogaine and Propecia. This study was small, with only four patients, but it helps to shed further light on this, on this procedure's use in the treatment of pattern baldness. All four patients were on finasteride and minoxidil 5% for anywhere from two to five years. There was no further loss of hair during this period, but there wasn't also any growth. Alongside their ongoing treatment, the patients were also subjected to microneedling sessions for six months. The results were tracked using a standardized seven-point evaluation scale, along with patient evaluation. While these aren't the most accurate ways to gauge efficacy, they do offer a general look at progress. At the end of the six month period, three of the patients expressed more than 75% satisfaction with the results, while the fourth patient expressed more than 50% satisfaction. In addition, all patients showed a plus two or plus three response on the seven point evaluation scale. While further studies need to be carried out, one thing is for sure, microneedling can play a role in boosting hair growth via various mechanisms. Here we've got a picture from the study. So we've got picture A, B and C. Picture A is hair regrowth at the end of the first month, B is at the end of the third month, and then the picture C, the one at the bottom, is at the end of six months. So we can see fantastic results here. The study also said that uh, in the discussion at the end is that microneedling is a novel and safe tool in the treatment of androgenetic alopecia which induces hair regrowth by the following. Release of platelet-derived growth factor and epidermal growth factors are increased through platelet activation and skin wound regeneration mechanism. Activation of stem cells in the hair bulge area under wound healing conditions which is caused by a derma roller and overexpression of hair growth related genes, vascular endothelial growth factor, beta catenin, 
WNT3A and WNT beta as documented in animal studies. So should you use clinic or at home microneedling? Well microneedling can be formed in a clinic or at home, so which one is right for you? Well the benefits of in-clinic treatment include the use of high quality tools and access to professional knowledge and expertise. Licensed microneedling professionals such as dermatologists and cosmetic Scrap that bit, do it again. Licensed microneedling professionals, such as dermatologists, can ensure that needles of the correct length are used for best results. They can also be sure that no damage is done during the procedure. However, a clinical session can be cost prohibitive. So, are at home treatments a viable alternative? Fortunately, yes. Microneedling is not a surgical procedure and it's possible to perform it on yourself without any particular training. You may need to experiment with the various tools to find one that you're most comfortable with. Well, are there any side effects of using a derma roller? As the procedure involves intentional wounding, there is always a risk of complications and adverse effects. The most common side effects include redness, tingling and or irritation, bruising and even oozing from the wounds. Redness and inflammation are very common and according to the American Academy Acad according to the American Academy of Dermatology, should subside after five days. There are those who should not perform microneedling without the supervision of a doctor, including women who are pregnant, men and women with diabetes or other conditions that inhibit healing, those on blood thinners or similar medications. And this precaution also extends to anyone with a history of open wounds or anyone who currently has acne or open wounds on the scalp or hairline. As shown in the 2015 study mentioned before, using microneedling alongside minoxidil can increase the absorption of the solution. However, applying minoxidil immediately after a microneedling session can cause symptoms including stinging, burning, itching and inflammation. The most severe complication is infection, as this is a concern whenever a wound is present. To prevent this from happening, the wound should be kept clean and the tool should be sanitized before each use. So guys, the question of the day today is, have you ever used a micro needler before and what were your results? While the derma roller can be daunting, it's actually quite easy to use. On dry hair, to avoid tangling the device in wet hair strands, place the derma roller at the edge of where you'd like to target, for example, the hairline or the outside of the crown. Roll the device slowly over the area, first horizontally, then vertically, and then diagonally three times. You should apply enough pressure to penetrate the scalp and feel a slight pricking or tingling, but not enough to cause pain. If there is hair in the area, be sure to move in the direction of the hair strands whenever possible to avoid pulling hair out from the follicles. You can continue the above technique on the various areas of thinning, or you can even perform it on your entire head. Once you're done, be sure to clean the, the roller using rubbing alcohol or an antibacterial soap. Then set it aside to let it dry and place it in its protective case or pouch until next time. This technique can be practiced a minimum of once per week, but more than twice per week is likely too much. So guys, let's go over a few frequently asked questions. Which derma roller should I choose? Now there are lots of different styles, shapes and sizes of derma roller, but they essentially all do the same thing. Get one with a round roller and high quality metal pins, just like the hair guard one that you can get by clicking the link in the description. What is the best size of derma roller? Well, the best size derma roller that we found to get the best quality results is one millimeter. And that is exactly why the one that you can claim in the description is one millimeter. Can the skin get infected from the derma roller? So it's very important to properly wash the derma roller before you use it again. If the pins aren't washed properly, then you increase the chances of infection. Pour boiling water over the roller before using it, but make sure that it cools down before applying it to your scalp. Infection is very rare, but irritation can occur. Use your own judgment about whether the irritation is too bad to continue. If you have an infection before using the derma roller, then wait until this clears up before continuing. That being said, typically you'll be using the derma roller on an area of scalp that is already bald or along the hairline where, are there, where there are less hairs. If you're using the derma roller for diffuse hair loss, then it's important to make sure that hair doesn't get caught in the roller. 
uh, what you may have to do is just do some shorter strokes. How do I clean the derma roller? It's important that you clean the derma roller each time you use it. If the pins are dirty, then you will increase your chances of getting an infection or irritating the skin. Take an antibacterial wash and mix with water in a mug. Place the derma roller inside the mug and leave it for one minute. Then swish it around. Remove the derma roller from the mug and rinse it with boiling water. Dry it and then place it back in its case or simply another clean container. How firmly do I press the derma roller? You should press it firmly enough so that it penetrates the skin down to the depth of the pin. This equates to a light pressure similar to applying roll-on deodorant. It shouldn't feel uncomfortable, but it may sting or tingle slightly. Now you shouldn't draw any blood and it shouldn't leave any visible sign when looked at from 30 centimeters away. We recommend going you know, lightly on the first round and then gradually applying more pressure as you get more comfortable with using it. What motion, direction and how many times should I apply the derma roller? You will want to get a good even covering of pin bricks, which means using the roller in multiple directions across the scalp. So that means going up and down, left and right and diagonally as well. Can this method be used for alopecia areata? Well, yes, this method has been successfully used by researchers to improve hair growth in male and female patients with alopecia areata. And whether you choose to use it in combination with or in lieu of traditional hair loss treatments, it may provide the boost you need to stop your hair loss and even promote new hair growth. If you have any questions, let us know below. Don't forget to hit subscribe and also don't forget to get your free derma roller by clicking the link in the description. I'll see you in the next video.